painting the face of therapy on both sides of the couch. <laughs> <laughs> That's dope. <laughs> we appreciate y'all for joining us today. Today we have the lovely Patrice Douglas, who has, I don't know, you said you got licensed three months ago, <laughs> and has just been taking over all of the U.S. Yeah, coast to coast. Coast to coast to coast. She's Her in coast inclo- included. Yeah. And so she is here to talk about what she does in her practice, which is anger management. But then we also want to ask a couple questions about how you have a practice in California, in New York, and now in Houston. Um, so you live in California. You live yes. in California. Um, so we're going to get there, but, um, we, can you introduce yourself a little bit, who you are, how you got to this point? Um, just just tell us about you. Tell us. (laughs) So, let's see. Yeah, I got my master's in 2016. Um, I decided in 2015, right before going to practicum that, um, I was going to open up a practice in New York. I remember sitting on my steps and looking at it, I'm like, you know what? Like, they only need 1500 hours like let's just do it and she's looking at me like why way out there and honestly it just spoke to me so from 2015 when i was in practicum all the way until i graduated i got those hours um and i was grinding um i was only an intern for a year before i finished my hours california requires you to do 3000 um they count up to 1700 pre-degrees so i was able to max out there and then i got the rest of my hours 1710 months um, so I literally just passed my exam this past February. Wow, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. They posted it in March. So I haven't been licensed that long, but um, I've been in mental health and behavioral health for at least five years. Wow. Okay. I started with children with autism. I think everybody out of school, they get their bachelor's, they're like, yes, and they realize, no, you need more education. Exactly. You need more so I stepped into the autism world, and that's when I started realizing that a lot of the families were suffering like they the kids were getting the help that they needed but they weren't going to therapy because they didn't have time right. there was divorces yeah. the adolescent kids mm-hmm. they were acting out and so i said you know what like we got to create something where they can get their help too and so virtual therapy came to mind and i was like okay i can do that that's, that's awesome. awesome and i love that because i think it really shows kind of having this progressive way of thinking you know um how can it be beneficial to them and you you utilize your time Mm -hmm. right because instead of going house to house to house to house right Mm -hmm. like so and and having that convenience for like you said these families that are so overwhelmed Mm -hmm. right i actually started um with autism and emotional disturbances and stuff like that Mm -hmm. teens and young kids that was my first job as a residential treatment center um so i completely understand that when you're trying to like to even teach them because the kids live with us but the grants come from visits, and we try to t- teach them some of the ABA techniques and things like that. Yes. And it, it was difficult sometimes, and it's such a high rate of like divorce and things like that right. um, with uh, marriages when they have kids with special needs and stuff right. like that. So that's awesome that you wanted to focus on the other aspects as well. Yes, because ABA was great, but it was bothering me that I couldn't ask the kid, like, why are you doing this? They just want me to fix it. I'm right. Like, that's why I'm in an FT. I'm like, I need to ask why. <laughs> we need to discuss why? the family history. Why? <laughs> why? Yeah. why? I don't want to just correct it. Why? So, um, and I think that goes partly into why I'm in my doctoral program as well. I am a student still, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. I thought I was going to be done. I'm not. Um, but I wanted to um, be able to do psychological assessments and testing to determine autism because the misdiagnosing and the high rate is just know ridiculous and especially within minority children we need somebody that kind of knows us better yeah. um so part of the reason why i'm pushing forward with my doctoral degree is to give back in that way as well that's fantastic so, man how do you juggle all of this i don't know <laughs> <laughs> Just doing it. i don't know i work at two agencies currently um and then i have my business wow at school so um i think i'm used to the chaos now mm. i probably don't know how to get out of the chaos Right, right. Probably. I probably would feel funny if I let somebody right. go. Yes. Like, what do I do yeah. this time? Yeah, what am I, what's wrong with me? Wow. Sometimes you gotta go. Yes. <laughs> Eventually you'll get to yeah. that place, but yes. then all that energy will get put into your business. Yes. And so you'll find ways to fill up that time. Yes. We're gonna talk about self care. <laughs> <laughs> I you probably need that time. Yeah, and you and Ebony both, too. <laughs> <laughs> I probably do. Right. Yeah. 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 So I wanna start with what your, the majority of your practice has been over the past few years has been anger management 
Yes. And the reason why I got started with anger management was because I was tired of working ABA. ABA is great, but it doesn't pay the bills very well because you get paid maybe, I think at the time I was making $15 an hour. So if a session, if I only got one session a day, I just made $30 for the whole day. Mm -hmm. You're not reimbursing for my my traffic, my mileage, anything Ooh. like that. So, um, and then I had came down with, I kept getting laryngitis and so my, my voice was hurting. Wow. Um, so I said, I need to do something. So I took the last little bit of my funds for school and I went and got a, um, a certification in anger management. Mm. And let me tell you, as much as I had that certification, nothing was popping off. I was still mm. broke. Mm. <laughs> I was so broke. I was That's still doing broke. my practicum, unpaid. It wasn't right. working. Right. It wasn't until I got on the court list and I was able to put myself as an intern on Psychology mm. Today that I started getting the phone calls. And the phone calls for anger management, I never would have thought that anger management would have took me here. Mm. Um, because everybody thinks anger management is just for a bunch of people sitting in the room because they punch somebody. Right, right. <laughs> that is so not it. Yeah. Most people haven't even laid a hand on anybody yeah. to be in anger management. Mm. Um, and so it just kind of turned into anger management. And then all of a sudden, here, I got 90% of my practice minority men. I'm wow, like, okay. I love that. So now my, my practice is anger management, men's issues, and multicultural issues. Love it. Yes, wow. the men... They come, they come to therapy and they love it. And yeah. I, that just warms my heart every day when they show up. Yeah. I'm just like, you here and you ready and they're open and they, they want to change. And right. They want relief. They want relief. Right. And they, they like to be solution focused and so anger management probably helps with that because it's very like clear on the steps and what you need to be doing and what you need to be working on. Yes. And they, they get to be vulnerable and they get to see like, you know, it's not always just them. People do poke them. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes it can be depression and anxiety. The fact that I'm able to educate them on mental health is important, too, because in the black community, especially men, like they, they avoid it at all costs. And mm -hmm. it's like you can't keep avoiding right. your symptoms. Right. Right. So my practice has turned into something I never thought it would. None, yeah. of, none of the stuff I'm doing in life. Let me tell you, <laughs> ain't none of the stuff that I'm doing was ever on the plan. Right. Wow. Right. But isn't that how it works out, you know, and yet you found so much, um, you're getting so much out of the work you're doing, right? It's kind of like you, you were led that way. Yeah. And so, and I think to even be able to do something that you know is so needed, right? Like that there's not a lot of people who are as passionate about, like you said, you know, allowing a space, a container for relief for, for, for the clients that are coming in mm -hmm. with you. Yeah, and, and I offer individual anger management. Everybody usually offers it in a group setting, but I give it an individual. So even if it's court mandated, I will sit, we will make a plan, and we will talk about your stuff individually. Because mm. I work with law enforcement, I work with attorneys, and you know some of the group settings, they may run into a client or somebody they arrested. Mm -hmm. True. So the fact True. that they are able to get the same, even more help in an individual setting and still get their needs met, I think that's the most important thing. I think I'm the only provider in my area that I know that does individual wow. hmm. I didn't realize When you start that. in a group, you're like, oh, that's a group. Right. Mm -hmm. That's true. Ten people, that's it. I'm not doing individuals. But, yeah, most of my practice is individuals. Individual. Wow. I could not get nobody in a group. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> can I do an individual? I'm like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's so yes. good, though, too, because I imagine that you're learning so much also with the individual work. Different, you know, that just like them, they're able to open up more and you're able to learn more also about the different reasons why people show up. Mm -hmm. And I even do anger management for couples. So, I mean, it's just everything ties into one. So anger management is like the best thing ever. Mm -hmm. I, I need to get, I need to go get a session. <laughs> Keep moving, keep going. 
<laughs> yeah, being a therapist does help us keep us in check. I mean, there'll be days where I'm going through stuff and I'm reading another curriculum. I'm like, oh, I get, <laughs> that, why is this chapter on me right now? Why? Sheesh. <laughs> okay. All right. It's I'll, still there. Always too hot, too. Well, that's my ringtone. <laughs> <laughs> It's still going. Tupac is always at swing session. <laughs> I told you he's my soulmate, so you've got to make a visit. <laughs> so you said earlier that people have certain perceptions about anger management. So can you talk about what anger management is and what it isn't? Yeah, um, I think the you know the idea of anger management. People thinking that okay, you're going to anger management to women in anger. No, I tell people all the time. Keep your anger, just make sure that you're using it the right way. Because right. anger can create so much positive change in the world. I mean, look at all the people that made a change. They were angry. Yeah. Okay, so it's not about getting rid of it. And I think that's why people are afraid to go to anger management because they are they feel like they've been labeled as this person that lashes out at people, punches people, threatens people. But sometimes it's your passive aggressiveness. Sometimes right. it's your depression because you don't speak out about how you feel. It's, you know, your stress management. It's about just having a voice. And so that's the biggest thing about anger management. I'm like, hey, you can be angry every day. Just make sure that you're going to turn it into the right thing. Right. You're not going to stew on it. You're not going to be plotting and planning in your head. How are you going to get this person back? <laughs> like, none of that. Just know, like, hey, I didn't like this. Why didn't I like this? Am I hormonal today? Did I eat? Am I hangry? Mm -hmm. What is it? And then address it. But keep it. I'm yeah. angry every day. Like, there's something that's always, <laughs> there's always something I'm like, really? But I have to check myself. I'm like, is this really a big deal? It's, yeah. it's not. Like, yeah. I, I can chill. Yeah. Or am I ready to deal with the consequences of right. me popping off? And nine times out of ten, right. I, I may have been like that back in the day where right. I was ready. Right. Yeah. I'm not ready no more. <laughs> That's like, what is the new song? I think it's Cardi B. And the, one of the guys says, I'm too rich to be getting in fights. <laughs> <laughs> it's a different line. <laughs> it's like, not about that. that. Like, you know, therapists, we can't be getting arrested. Yeah, our life so says, so I'm like, no, I'm just going to. You know, go to God. <laughs> I'm out of my time. No. <laughs> right. But I think that's a good point of anger is just an emotion like all the rest of them. And so it's not something mm -hmm. that you necessarily have to get rid of. It's more about uh, managing your reaction. Yes. Right? Not necessarily managing when you're angry and when you're not angry. Yes, because if you keep it in there, I mean, anger can cause, you know, heart failure, heart attacks, mm -hmm. high blood pressure. Like, you really don't have time right. to always be popping off. Right. Because a little inside tip to the y'all. Yeah. So, <laughs> wait, wait, let me take notes. <laughs> so when you get angry and you get into that, you know, that state, you're in your fight or flight mode. So think about being your fight or flight mode 24-7. Oh, yeah. It's going to burn out. Oh, yeah. And then your body's going to have no defense. Right. And so what's going to happen? You're going to start getting weak. Mm -hmm. So you can't just always be angry 24-7. Right. It only takes three seconds for your anger to hit you. Like, oh, something's up. What are we going to do about it? And it stays up to 30 minutes. Yeah. So that's why you gotta breathe, you gotta take a yeah. break, you gotta right. go watch some TV, you gotta go get your aromatherapy right. oils and really come back to what's going on. Because if you just lash out when that three seconds hit, you don't even know what's going on. Mm. Plus it causes wrinkles. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I tried checking out because I'm getting older, so I'm like, I can't be having <laughs> these frown lines up here. <laughs> You know, I'm gonna add that to my right. thing. It's, it's bad, bad for your skin. It, it, it is bad. It's bad for your skin. It's bad for your diet. It's bad for your heart. It's bad for your relationships. Yes. It's bad for your self esteem. Like that's why you gotta use it for good. Yeah. And I use anger for good every day. I think the reason why I am a therapist, the reason why I am, they call me the stigma slayer. Oh, I don't know where that came from, <laughs> but I think that's my anger. So mm -hmm. I just use it for good. I I educate people. Well, you know, I, I crush stigmas because mm -hmm. I'm angry all the time that there's stigmas. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's how you channel it. your anger. Mm -hmm. I'm like, right, right, the stigma slayer. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know where that came from. I'm like, okay, I'll be that. <laughs> Same Same <other> day. Day. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna update this to with uh, between sessions with the stigma with slayer. The stigma slayer. <laughs> <laughs> so you named a lot of ways that anger affects you physically, emotionally, your relationships, and all of that. When do you know that anger has become a problem within your life? How would you know? When you snap, you don't really remember why you snapped, or all of a sudden you don't have no friends, your partner ain't talking to you, <laughs> um, your boss keeps calling you into his office, mm -hmm. you may be getting fired, um, your heart pressure, your heart blood pressure is going up, everything. Like you just start noticing, like, 
why am I so angry all the time? And why can't I calm it down? And why everybody don't want to be around me? That's when you start to realize that, hey, this isn't cool. And sometimes, unfortunately, you get to the point where you did get arrested or something. You start realizing, like, I got an anger problem. Right. That would be a good indicator. Right? Kind of, right? And it's like, oh, you're here for a reason. But I think that's where it's at is when it lasts too long, it's too frequent. Every little thing sets you off. Right. And we got to really, like, why, is every, why are you so, you know, t- bound up so tightly? Like, why can't you just, you know, let things, like, slide? Yeah. Some things just got to slide. You can't be mad about everything. Right. What do you find is the most common reason that people hold on to their anger? Um, well, I mean, anger, they, there's always a battle between it being a secondary or primary emotion, but it's our defense line. So we're not going to tell you, hey, you hurt my feelings. <laughs> I'm about to tell you everything about yourself since, like, 1999. Your mama, and your mama, and your uncle, kid, and your dog. Like, that's just where it is. Instead of saying, like, you hurt my feelings, right. I'm upset, mm-hmm. we're going to lash out. And so I think that's where it comes from. It's just like it's our defense mechanism. Right. Like if so we, we were feel vulnerable. Yeah, we were able to say, you know what, Mary, that just really mm-hmm. hurt my heart right now. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't have to do it all that, but you're ready to go. Right. right. And, right. and I think that's within our community as well. We don't. We know how to keep the defense up. We're not going to let everybody know everything. Right. Right. And so popping off is a new norm now. Like everybody mm-hmm. want to pop off. They think it's cute. Right. It's right. not cute. Right. Right. It doesn't right. solve anything. In fact, you're going to be alone. With medical bills and, and, and pressure pills <laughs> and wrinkles. I think I'm trying to age you. You made a good point of like even it's the protection a lot of yeah. times, yeah. and that's what it's about. It's like I don't want you to see that you have affected me in that way. I don't want you to see that I am hurt or impacted by what you said or what you did. So let me just try to hurt you as much as you hurt me. That's a right. lot of times with my clients, I say, if somebody steps on your toe, your first reaction isn't to be like, oh, you might have accidentally did right. that. Right. Your first reaction is like, I want to stop on both of you. Yeah, like, like what's wrong with you? Do? Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so you have to kind of take a step back to say like, okay, why do I need to like hurt them as much as they hurt me? Mm-hmm. What does that give me? Right. Sometimes you say it makes me feel better. Right. <laughs> so like, how do we get that in other ways or whatever right. that be? Because that's a very temporary feeling. You'll end up regretting it later. Mm-hmm. Like, I remember I used to, I'm a very compassionate person, <laughs> and uh, it takes me a long time to see when people are not doing the right thing. So when you finally do the wrong thing, like I'm all about it. Like, mm. I'm about to show you <laughs> why you should never do that, and I would feel horrible later. So it's just not worth it. And I think anger too has um, is due to low self esteem. I mean, like the controlling people, like where are you going? You know, you can't talk to this person. The controlling issues is anger management. It's self esteem. Like, why can't your girl wear those jeans? Mm-hmm. She wants tight jeans because she wants to feel good about her butt mm-hmm. better. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. You're not going out like that, or right. you know, I feel like I should have my way. These are things about you know just our vulnerabilities. So. Just being right. fear based, right? Really? Yes. And it's more based on your insecurities than that other person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and I think that feeling of anger gives us this false sense of of being empowered, right? Like because we're kind of in our anger. And so often we'll hold on to that anger towards somebody else, but they forgot about it. Right. <laughs> They've been over it. Three days. Meanwhile, you, still... you are churning inside and angry and like really like understanding like that's just, that's not punishing them because they're not even sweating it. They don't even know that you're still angry. They've moved on. You're right. punishing yourself. Mm-hmm. And so um, <clears throat> I told a client this a few weeks ago. I don't know how I'm going to coin it one day, but I told him, I said, do you like leftovers? And he was like, I said exactly. Nobody likes leftover anger. Mm. Nobody wants it. By the time you're ready to address it, they're like, you still, <laughs> you still talking about this? It's like, you mad? It's like it's fresh. No, nobody mm. wants leftovers. So, you know, address it then and there in the most appropriate way, of course. But don't let it stew forever. It's nasty right. by then. Right, right. I, I'm not a big fan of leftovers. I'm not. Yeah. Some things. I like right. cold pizza. Pizza, <laughs> spaghetti, but you know, spaghetti like but right. most leftovers yeah. you're just like yeah, it's not the same. Like you don't want fried fish the next day. <laughs> you don't want to put it in the in the microwave and stick up the whole house it's like soft instead of like crispy. It's just nasty. So or or microwaving your fries from like two yeah. hours. Nobody wants that. So think about your anger. Like if you just get it off your chest now, you're doing yourself a favor. And yeah. Not only that, they'll be more inclined to listen. But if you bring it into the five days, like. Remember on Monday yeah. at twelve o'clock yeah. when you and you're like, yeah, <laughs> I don't want it, and then that starts a fight. Right. Because why are you bringing up old mess? Yeah. See, I've had to work a lot on that because I have a really long memory. So like, I'm like, oh my goodness, that one time 
remember it was 1997 and we were in and I was wearing that red like what <laughs> that's why I don't want you <laughs> and that's why you know what is that like oh you want to you want to be my Facebook friend now but in third grade remember that time you know it's like so I had to learn to let go because yeah. Oh, the stress. The stress and the pettiness. Oh, I can be petty. Yeah. Like, I'm going to be working on my pettiness. But, uh, yeah, the pettiness is real when you have that long term memory, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, ang anger is great, but you just got to keep it in check and remember that it's all about forgiveness, too. There's a big component of anger management is forgiveness. Like you said, if you're sleeping at night, worrying about you getting a hot bottle, and they were there, you know, drooling on their pillow, it's all about <laughs> you letting go. Exactly. Apparently, yeah. it's you that mm -hmm. has the biggest problem, mm -hmm. so you need to figure out why and forgive and move on. How do you um, teach or define forgiveness to those clients that come in and, and you say, okay, well, you know, we're going to work on forgiveness. How do you define that or how do you help them to kind of go through the process of forgiveness? I tell them that it's for you, it's not for them, mm -hmm. and you're not letting them off the hook and just because you forgive them doesn't mean that they have a right to come back in your life this is all about freeing it from your soul and your mind right mm -hmm. because if it's affecting your work you're not sleeping i mean these are all things that are affecting your mental health and yeah. people are going to hurt us they're going right. to do it in intentionally and you know intentionally mm -hmm. it, it doesn't matter but at the end of the day we have to let go and and i'm a christian but I don't do the whole, like, I'm going to forgive by the end of the night. No, that's not going to happen, okay? <laughs> Sometimes I want to hold on to it, and I am being petty, and I know, and I tell it, hey, I'm being petty, I don't want to right now. Mm -hmm. You know, you I'll deal with it. it. I own it, but at some point, I'm going to have to let it go, because mm -hmm. like you said, they moved on with their life, they done got new friends, new men. Mm -hmm. I'm over yeah. here stewing, yeah. Like, a, yeah. Uh, like a cat lady at home, time out, <laughs> you know, they brought, they this. Yeah. No, you have to let go for yeah. yourself. Forgiveness yeah. is all about yourself. You can forgive and never talk to them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, it's your own closure. Right, forgiveness doesn't require re-entry. It does into not. Right. right. I think right. that's what we got to confuse. It's like turn the other cheek. They think like, oh, we can go back to hanging out. No, no. not really. Like you understand where you lie, but it's the forgiveness is that it's releasing it from your soul. So you need to do that. And I think you know the idea that that acceptance means that that it was okay. You're not right. saying that it's okay. It's just it happened. And now what am I going to do about it, you know? And I think I, I remember, I think it was Oprah, and I'm like, oh, I like that definition of forgiveness, where it was like um, letting go of the hope that the past will ever be any different, you know? Because it's, like, it's not going to be. Right, <laughs> you know? it is, yeah. And when you can just accept it is what it is, now from here I'll make decisions. You know, that's that's easier than the, I think so many of us might think that forgiveness is like, oh, now I have to be really vulnerable and meek and you can hurt me again. Mm -hmm. Hey, you don't have to hang out with them again and be like, okay, mm -hmm. I forgive you to yourself. You don't yeah. tell them either. Right. Right. And just move forward. That's the biggest key is you just gotta mm -hmm. move forward. And sometimes it is okay to stew in your stuff. Like I stew. Right. I'm not gonna be like, oh I'm a therapist so I can just get over it. No, right. sometimes I do need a couple of days, yeah. but I know at the end of the day, like for me to move forward I have to forgive. Right. Like just because you're a therapist doesn't mean we're on the mountaintop in the lotus position. No way. <laughs> nope. I'm no, regular. No, we drive yeah. to the store. We go to church. Yeah. We take showers. <laughs> you know, we struggle on the vegan. Yeah. I'm not a vegan, but I tried it. So I don't, I don't eat the most healthiest. You know, and it's right. funny when clients see us. I'm like, oh my gosh, you grocery shop? Yes. I do. <laughs> you went to the movies? I did. I did. Yeah. I did. You know, I put my shoes on one foot at a time. So, you know, it, it's all about just we're humans. I think that's what makes us great is that we've been here before. We accept it. We identify with it. We can understand it. We can help you. We've right. done it ourselves. Right. And I think that's the thing. I think so many of us get into this profession because we did go through something, right? Like that, you know, we, we can now speak to that pain or that experience or whatever it was. So, yeah. I love that. that. <laughs> I will own that. She's like, Anybody, I'm you know, before my bachelor's degree will to tell you. But yeah, it's all about growing and mm -hmm. changing. And I think mm -hmm. that's what makes us great about therapists. We can guide people to do that. I love it. So, how do you, what do you see the difference as a therapist now and then doing more psychoeducation and anger management in the beginning? And how is therapy a different type of help for anger management or for people that have anger issues? 
I think for anger management, psychoeducation is just so basic. When you get into the individual and the, and the therapy part, you can open up so many things as to why anger happens. I mean, a big chunk of the reasons a lot of people are in my office, being that they're minorities, is racial trauma. Mm-hmm. So the anger stems from that. It's not about just getting loud. We're loud all the time. I, t- I mean, these anger management books frustrate me because I'm like, really? Okay, I'm loud. So I'm automatically, I'm loud all the time. Yeah. That's my passion. Right. Um, but the different things about, you know, just understanding, you know, why we react the way we do, you know, even, you know, black men being that, you know, they're afraid to, you know, drive down the street or, you know, if somebody's going to take them as being aggressive at work, right. especially right. black women, the angry mm-hmm. black woman syndrome. I mean, mm-hmm. I think being able to do it on a therapy level, I get to go into the depths of things. Right. Psychoeducation is very book. It's like, okay, lesson one. Mm-hmm. Right. The brain. Okay. <laughs> Lesson two. So why is it important? Like it's yeah. just, it's okay, but you need more than that. I think sure. that's why people like individuals because they get that. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, can you give a few tips for people that may not know, think that they need anger management or going to see somebody that, but they can help them now, even when they get in those moments when they're not fully aware of like why am I reacting this way or why do I flip out? You know, are there any tips to kind of help them? Yeah, when you start feeling your heart beat really fast or you about to pop off, count to 10 and who saw it out? Because you, whatever you're about to say is about to be wrong. Mm-hmm. And you're not even listening. Once your anger hits, right. whatever they're saying, you, you missed it all. Yeah. Right. So ask, like, you know, can you repeat what you just said? Or if I understand you correctly, paraphrase it. Make sure that you fully understand what the person just said before getting upset. If you can't get to that point, just count to 10 and go ahead and go to the bathroom. <laughs> And then just think about, like, what is really going on. That's the biggest key. Just be mindful. You don't always have to speak right away. Right. It's okay to take a pause. Yeah. And I think it's, you know, it's helpful to highlight that the reason you're taking that pause is, like, what you said earlier, your brain, the part that is, you know, sitting there, like, with the radar for danger, danger, yes. threat, has been triggered. And yes. so you're not breathing properly. You're not, so... You're thinking. Your right. Your is down. You're going to, right. Mm-hmm. So anything you say or you do, it's like, it's going to be from that space of fight or flight. Yes. Right. It's like the beehive. Mm-hmm. Don't come for Beyonce. <laughs> okay. So everybody has a beehive in their brain. It's ready. <laughs> it's ready. That's why I think I'm like, the beehive. Think about the yeah, beehive. The yeah. beehive thinks you right. even pr- provoke their queen Right, thing. right, right. It's already popping. So that's right. what's happening in your mind mm-hmm. when somebody says something wrong or you feel a certain type of way. That's why you got to... I take a deep breath and just right. really make sure that you understood what just happened and think about what's going to happen if I react. If right. you're ready for those consequences, then right. I can't stop you. But right. if you ain't, you know, right. take a deep breath. And you just can't trust it. yourself right. in that state. Yeah. Yeah. No. And yeah. the breathing helps to give that part of your brain more oxygen to kind of Come, bring you back. Down to so you can be rational again. Mm-hmm. That anger, you all are rational. Right. 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 So right. you go to war, you're not right. You're just ready to go. Right. 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 And you are fighting on based on that fear of yes. the emotion as opposed to what's actually happening in front of you. Yes. Yeah. Don't come for the beehive. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's important for like how you're saying, like for us to recognize how long it takes us to get there. Yeah. Right? Because some of us may be a little quicker to anger than others, right? Like, why are you just bump into me like that? You mm-hmm. know, like I'm you know With the quickness. Right. Yeah. So really recognizing like how quick you go to that stage. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. And don't believe that everybody's out to get you. Mm-hmm. I think that's the biggest thing. If somebody bumps you in the grocery store, mm-hmm. they may may have not even seen you or mm-hmm. even thinking about you, but don't always think that everybody's out to get you. Right. A lot of people that are on edge with their anger is because they think everybody's out there with negative vibes to come and get them. Right. That's not true. Some people it don't really intentionally mean to do things. Right. They're humans. You, we do that all the time. We don't intentionally mean to do a lot of things. Right. So just keep that in mind before you pop off that nine times out of ten, it wasn't a personal attack against you. Um, so you have a stress management guide right now. Yes. So um, somebody informed me that it's National Stress Awareness Month, which I didn't even know they have their month. Everybody got a month. Everybody got a month. <laughs> Where's y'all month? I next know. Month. No, that's right. That's right. Next, next month. month. That's true, though. Next month. Um, so I decided to do uh, 15 days of stress management tips. So it was an email blast that you get one stress management tip a day. And it goes from, you know, the typical, you know, get your oil down and pray to just say no. Mm. You will relieve a lot of stress if you just use this word no. Yeah. yeah. It took me forever, but I love it now. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> and I say with a smile, like, no. I, I, no. I, why? I don't even have to explain it. I yeah. just say no. That's a complete.
complete sentence. I don't no. want to. <laughs> I don't want to. So uh, I think it's important because I think everybody has stress, and stress is never going to go away. There's good stress and there's bad stress, but as long as you can manage it and reduce as much as you can, that's in your control, you'll be fine. Got it. Got it, got it, got it. So why do you think therapy is dope? We see you have your therapy and buy dirty words, shirts mm-hmm. and mugs and things but like you, that. Yeah, you sell those. Yes, right? mm-hmm. yes. All the profits go towards um, preventing low-cost workshops or um, providing therapy to those that can afford it. That's awesome. So, yes, I don't keep any of the profits. Um, I think therapy is dope is because you're constantly working on yourself. Like, mm-hmm. we're evolving every day. And I'm sorry, but there's just a lot of things you cannot talk to with your friends and family. They're biased. They always got their opinions. <laughs> They're wrong a lot. <laughs> They're wrong a lot. Yeah. And um, you need that person that is not going to judge you and just really lay everything out on the table. You don't have to have a mental illness to go to therapy. Right. If you right. just need to talk to someone about some things that is happening in your life, and I just think everybody can benefit from a therapist. I have one. Yeah. Right. I do. Okay. Me too. We get, get all of it every time, too. <laughs> Everybody needs that person that they can talk to. Right. Um, so I think therapy is, is beneficial for everybody. There's not one person on this earth that cannot benefit from therapy. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. So tell me, um, what makes you a dope therapist? What are you, What are you trying to do to change mental health? Both Ooh. sides of the couch. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good question. Um, I think I'm a dope therapist. You just thought us 30 things you're doing. I know. I'm like, you don't know why you're dope, okay? And we asked because her, and she's like, I don't know. I've done nothing. <laughs> what have I done? Let me see. Um, I think I'm a dope therapist because, um, and I've been told, ta- told this since I was a kid, that my empathy and my compassion levels are off the charts. Mm-hmm. Like, So I, I think I'm able to always tune in and put myself in other people's shoes, mm-hmm. and I think that I keep it 100 with everybody. I never sugarcoat anything. I might use my soft voice, or I might just come out and tell you, like, you need to chill out. Mm. Um, I think that my passion to help people is what makes me a dope therapist. I, I feel like I can help anyone that wants to come into my office and get the help. I don't judge anyone. Mm. I'm always trying to create opportunity to make us relate to mental health. I mean, textbook knowledge was kind of boring in school, but when you relate it to, like, the Mariah Carey's, the Beehive, the Jay-Z's, the, you know, everybody, even just our own community, I think people get to identify with it more. Mm-hmm. So I'm always trying to figure out a way to help people understand whether you're, you know, 11 to, you know, 90 years old. I'm going to be able to correlate something that you can relate to so that you feel like it's dope to have right. mental health therapy. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Love it. Um, do you have a favorite resource, a book, or a podcast, or anything that you like? think is helpful and it doesn't have to be specifically about anger management just something that you think is helpful well i think therapy for black girls podcast is really well uh, really good um i actually got a lot of referrals from there you know i didn't think anybody knew what rancher kookamonga was <laughs> so when i said it i always laugh because i'm like oh you know it's from the friday movie but it exists yeah. um but a lot of black women live in rancho so i was able to um, really reach out to them um, I think um, your guys' stuff is dope. I mean, your t-shirts are dope. The things that you guys do, the directory, I think is really cool. Um, as far as book-wise, um, what is that book called? That The Art of... Yes. I was literally just sitting in the podcast <laughs> yes. with the author. I was listening to really? it. Yeah. Yes, the that book not, is... The subtle helpful. art of not having a book. Yes, yeah. that book is helpful to use while you're in therapy. Because sometimes... When you're like hesitant, you're in therapy, but you're hesitant, you're like, maybe there's nothing wrong with me. That book tells you like, hey, <laughs> um, yeah, there is. you actually need to be in here and it's good to have both. Mm-hmm. Um, so that book, as far as anger management, there is a workbook that I use. Um, it's called What's Good About Anger. It's a curriculum, um, but it also has Bible scriptures in there too. So for the faith-based people that feel like um, they are ashamed to have anger, mm. there's some scriptures telling you that it's all right. Just check it. Mm. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. So tell us about your practice, the locations, how we can see you in Houston, or in Texas, I guess, but in Houston and in New York and in California. Okay. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> so in California, in the IE, um, so like that's Ontario, Chino, Rancho Cucamonga. If you want to come from LA, I do have some that come from LA, you know, teach its own. Um, but you can schedule um, in session, in office sessions with me. Um, I do anger management, anxiety, depression, stress management. Uh, 
um, minority um, issues, men's issues, men's issues is like my biggest thing right now. Um, so you can book through, you know, EmpireCounseling.net. Um, as far as like my New York and Texas locations, those are all virtual. Um, every quarter I will come out to do an in-person session with you. You can also find that information. Um, right now for both of them, it's mostly anger management and stress management. And for all states, I am um, approved to do anger management for court mandated people. So sweet, oh, that's very awesome. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then, how do they find you on social media if they want to try to book a session? Where do they go? Um. So yeah, everybody has a Facebook, but I mean, I don't really use my Facebook. So <laughs> if you want to find, if you want to find the most unfiltered stuff I ever say in life, that's Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Twitter is okay, but I have a hard time keeping up with Twitter because I feel like I. I don't talk enough or I'm talking too much. Mm-hmm. Um, you can find me on the Patrice Nicole um, on Instagram. If you want to find me on Facebook, I repost a lot of great mental health articles and events that are happening. Um, that's at Patrice and Douglas. That's my Twitter handle as well. Okay. And your website is? Um, so my personal is patriceanddouglas.com or you can go to my business, empirecounseling.net. Awesome. That is a lot. We'll put all of that yes. <laughs> in the show notes. Um, but thank you so much yeah. for joining us. Yeah. Oh, and tell them oh, yeah, about right. your this event. This is a live place yeah. for Bob. Oh, that's right. Okay. <laughs> so this is the day of my launch party. Um, I launched in Texas on the 5th. Um, this is actually the first location that's getting a launch party. Even California, I haven't done one yet. Wow. That's, they're jealous. They're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Where's our event? Um, it's coming. Um, so tonight at the Thinking Boutique, where you're going to have a launch party if you are an advocate of mental health. You don't have to be a therapist, but if you just love mental health, come out and network with us. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a bartender and there's going to be food. Um, so it's going to be a good time. And I just want to get to know people in Houston. Yep. Yeah. And we will be there tonight. Yes. Yes. So we're excited to see everybody show up for her event and for her mm-hmm. launch party. Mm-hmm. Um, you can like Cardi B and Beyonce up in there. Right. <laughs> Playlist. Like, I gotta go ahead and change. Name. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and ready to dance. Yes. yes. <laughs> Well, thank y'all for joining yes. us. Of course, tomorrow we will be in Austin. That's right. Well, tomorrow. 420. Yeah. <laughs> 420, huh? 420. Not saying anything's going to happen. We're just saying we're, we're going to be in Austin. Austin. At the, uh, 420. Um, at the W. Uh, w. Trace. Houston. Trace, Trace, Trace Austin. Trace Austin. The W. Come out. You know, we're going to have a good time. And just we want to find out, you know, how Austin is changing the face of therapy. Um, so come out again, you know, therapists, mental health advocates, um, community, just come out, meet us and tell us what you're doing in Austin. Right. And also make sure that you sign up for the directory. We have about two more weeks left while we're off that we're offering the three months free. So check it out. Go sign up before April 30th. <laughs> yes. Um, because then that's when we're going to cut it off and then you have to pay for every month. So get the last, um, get the last spots for the three months free. Right. Um, and check out the directory. Make sure that y'all are referring people from there. Um, we have people from all over the U.S. Um, and I think that's it. Yes. Yep. That's it. I mean, that's <laughs> it. That's all. All of those things. <laughs> Follow us across social media at Melanin and Mental Health. That's right. Uh, Melanin Health on Twitter. And then check out the Between Sessions podcast Facebook group as well. And the Melanin and Mental Health Professionals group if you are a mental health professional. Yes. 